I'm Atuba George and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Are we ready to call for that daily bread? Now, today is the last day of the month of August. I don't know what bills you have to pay today. I don't know. Now, maybe you not, not, shouldn't necessarily be always waiting for the last day of the month. But you see, that which pertains to August should be done in August. Now, that's something you must release your faith for. Every bill for August should be paid in August. Release your faith for it. You know, sometimes as believers, um, you can take certain things for granted and it's not right at all. It's not right. The Bible says, Oh, no man, nothing but to love. So don't take up this habit of what is it. You know, some people are like, eh, everybody owes. So, no. No, make up your mind. You will not be that way. Praise God. Why am I sharing this with you? Because there is so much grace available. So the things you're supposed to pay for in the month of August, then let it be paid in the month of August. But, but I don't have the money. That's why I'm here. There's a grace available for you. If you will make up your mind, then the grace of God will be made available for you. So are you ready? Have you made up your mind? <laughs> if you have just quickly said, Lord, I think, I think I have heard. And I repent from that attitude of carrying things over. Lord, I want to do everything for this month, this month. Today's the last day of the month, so I want to just do it. Praise God. Now, if you are that person, then you are ready to receive something supernatural even today. Join me now as we declare, say, Father, I receive today my daily bread and everything I need to end this month right. I receive it right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Listen to me. A miracle is coming your way. Hallelujah. You know, let's just bless the Lord as we go into today's message. Father, we thank you. You are so good. You have kept us even through this year, 2021. And we are ending the month of August today. Thank you for your grace that is mighty upon our lives. Thank you for all the testimonies that came in in the month of August. Thank you for testimonies of well-being. Thank you for testimony of people getting pregnant. Thank you for testimony of people getting healed, people being delivered, financial blessings. Lord, we just give you praise for all these things. And Lord, even today I pray, anyone listening to me right now that needs a miracle today, or that has any burden that they are carrying right now, I declare that burden is lifted from them. I declare the yoke is destroyed right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, receive grace for a multiplied harvest today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise God. Now I began sharing with you yesterday on a series we've been dealing with, and uh, but yesterday we began to talk about the power of the renewed mind. And I showed you yesterday that when God made man in the book of Genesis chapter 1, he made man by speaking. And his intention when he spoke out his heart was that man would be in his image and after his likeness. But now in Genesis chapter 2, which actually was many years after God spoke in those six days, he formed man. But now God testified himself that the man he formed is flesh. Now I explained to you yesterday that that's the reason Jesus came and said to us, you must be born again. I think we should read that 
John chapter 3. Very important, very important scripture. I need you to follow my line of thoughts, just like Paul said. It says, when you read, you will understand my wisdom in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Genesis chapter 1, sorry, John chapter 3 and verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Verse 5. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Now, when he says a man be born of water and of the Spirit, hear me. He was referring to the born of the water then is, is being born of the flesh. He's being born of the flesh. Now, I know some people say he was referring to water baptism. No, Jesus wasn't referring to water baptism here. He wasn't. He was using water to explain flesh. Yeah, you see, because... To be born of the water means to, to, be, to come from the earth. Because, of course, you know, just like they'll tell you that our bodies are, um, has a lot, a lot of, of water in it. Because that's what the earth is made of. Now, he, he, what was Jesus saying here? He says, you must first be born of the flesh. Then you must be born of the spirit. See, you must be born of the flesh first. Then you must be born of the Spirit. Now, that was God's intention from the beginning. But Adam and Eve did not get to the place where they should be born of the Spirit. Now, did God make provision for them? Yes, God made provision for them. Those two trees God put in the garden. He said, don't eat of those tree." Now, that's what the translator said to us. But God really didn't say, don't eat of the tree. He actually said, don't eat of this tree freely by yourselves until I command you to eat it. Because the tree was meant to be eaten. See, now, what about the tree? Nothing. It was a physical tree, had real fruits on them. But you see, that tree was a mark. Now, let me explain this to you so you understand. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It's like you are going to a place. Someone is trying to describe a place to you. And the person said, look, as you're driving about 10 kilometers, you will see a signboard saying, welcome to Los Angeles or welcome to Abuja or welcome to wherever. Now, when you get to that place, and you see that sign. You don't say, oh, I have reached. And then you park your car there and stay there. No, that is an indication that you are in the right direction. So when you see it, you know, okay, I have stepped in to this place. See, so I know that I've got in there. But you don't park your car there and say, this is where I'm going to stay. And when I stay here for how many days, I'll now go back and say, I went to that city. No, sir. <laughs> Praise God. So it's the same thing. When God placed that tree there, he said, you see this tree? Don't eat of it until I tell you to eat of it. Now, what was the tree supposed to do? The day God tells them to eat of that tree was the day God had planned to visit them. And when God visited them, then there were two trees, remember? The tree of life also. Now, you cannot eat the tree of life until you are born again. Yeah! So, God, before Adam and Eve sinned, had the plan for man to be born again. Did you get that? <laughs> and, and let me tell you another thing many people don't know. It is only Jesus that was ordained from the beginning to minister the tree of life to man. So, huh? Yeah. That's to let you know something that Jesus, the plan for Jesus to come was not because of Adam and Eve's sin. 
Even if they had not seen, Jesus would still have come. Why? Because God had ordained from the beginning that Jesus would be the minister that will give man life. Ah, yeah, that's the truth. So now you know the story. Adam and Eve did not get to where God had ordained for them to get to. And they broke that instruction God gave to them. They ate of the tree because Satan deceived them. And I have always told you this. Even Satan was trying to understand the mystery of that tree. He, he didn't know what it was behind the tree. He didn't know the instruction behind it. He just knew that for God to give them this kind of instruction, then there must be something. So Satan too was looking for what was going to happen when they eat the tree. It was his own inquisition that made him push Eve to eat from the tree. Yeah, that's the truth. And they ate the tree. You know, some people think, they were spirit beings, but when they ate the tree, they now became flesh. No, sir, that is not true. They never became spirit beings. They didn't get to the place where they would be transformed to the spirit. Now, I believe those two trees were there for a reason. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil was the day man was meant to be born again. Yes, because it is the Holy Spirit that reveals good and evil to you. Jesus said he will guide you into all truth. And Jesus also said the Holy Spirit will bring, will reprove the world of sin, of righteousness and judgment. So you combine those two thoughts, you'll find the knowledge of good, him guiding you into all truth, and then the knowledge of evil where judgment is concerned. So you can judge properly. You need to know good and evil before you judge. So I believe that the tree of knowledge of good and evil was the point where man was supposed to be born again. Now, and then after that, there was the tree of life. And that's the one that Jesus would have come to administer to man. You see, some of us don't know this. The Holy Spirit is the one reigning now. Jesus came to reign first. But then he really didn't reign in his capacity over the earth. He just came to introduce us to the truth and usher us into the realm of the Holy Spirit. And then he had to now die for our sins because now sin has become, a, become an obstacle. See? So he had to deal with sin. And But then today we just major on the sin part beyond the sin if there was no sin in the first place jesus would have still come so let's set our minds on why he came so i told you yesterday i said the reason we get born again is that we are born of the spirit now the moment you are born of the spirit you have the ability right now to know between good and evil see god spoke to them in in, in deuteronomy say i place before you good and evil right and wrong blessings and causes and then he says he said actually place before you life and death choose life so that you will live and then having known good and evil you are given the opportunity to make a choice because god is not going to force life on you it's going to be something out of your will now, when I say out of your will, that is where your mind come into being. Your mind come into place. Your mind plays a very important role as a born again child of God. Your mind is what God is actually looking at. Your mind is what has been given to you to function with, to function by. That is where you have your will, your emotions, your intelligence. That is it. Then the the spirit of God, now listen to me, the spirit that is in you is not different from the Holy Spirit. Many people don't understand this. They think, oh, I have my spirit. And then the Holy Spirit is now um, given to me. So two spirits, no, sir. The spirit in us is the Holy Spirit. There is no other spirit. You must understand this. So now that, now that you are born again, this is what God expects of every one of us. And what is that? That you 
will begin to renew your mind. Amazingly, this is where I got to yesterday and we had to stop. Now, I know there are lots of things you know, I, I have to share with you. When I'm trying to set the foundation right, because we're going to be dealing with this in, in the month of September, because this is the heart of God. And I pray you come to that place of understanding and begin to live the life that God has ordained for you. The expectation of God for your life is this, that your mind be renewed. Renewed to what? I trust the Spirit of God will begin to look into that tomorrow. Have a blessed day ever. And I pray for you today. As the month ends today, I, I see a door opening for you. Hear me. September is going to be glorious for you. Fear not. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.